What is going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a great week. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Black Apino the Apple Guy. Today, I'm just going to go over my new Blink XT security camera app. This is just going to be a quick initial overview of the app as I've already done an unboxing and review of the camera system itself. I'll have a link in the description on that, but right now we're just going to kind of go through some of the initial things of the app and what you can do with it. So obviously you can see from the screen here, this is my Blink app that I have in front of my garage, obviously with the name Garage entitled on the top. So initially when you buy your first camera or buy cameras, depending on where you have it set at or where you have them set up at, you can name each individual app. And when you open up your app, what you see on the front of this is going to be showing you what each app or what each camera will be showing when you're looking at it. Um, as you can see from this initial app, there are going to be different icons for this, and I'm just going to kind of go through some of them briefly. So obviously the name of my camera is Garage, because obviously as you can see, it does show the front of my garage. And to the mid, or should I say to the middle of the app, this is your video recorder, and to the right of that, there's the camera. Now the camera itself does not give you live video feed. Uh, that's, I'm assuming there's probably one way to make sure that the camera maintains its two years worth of battery life. But if you want to look at a live feed of your camera, you basically would just tap on the video recorder as I just did and it will load it up and then it will initially just show you what the camera is looking at in real time view. And as you can see, um, it does show um, that. And if you leave it there for an extended amount of time, what will happen is there'll be an icon that will say extended view may drain battery. Um, hit continue. If you do nothing, it'll just basically record whatever the camera is showing. Um, but basically, that is with the live feed. As you can see, extended live view will impact battery life. If you don't want that, you just simply close out. And that's basically how that works. And as you can see from the middle, it says add a blink device. You basically tap on that and you just initially add your app or you add your camera to that. Now at the very bottom from the corner, you will see um, there's something called a, what is known as a hub with the cloud and something called armed. Um, basically what this is, is this is gonna be where your module is. The, you're gonna be using your module, or basically this is the module that is used to communicate between the app and the camera. So I'm just gonna tap on it really quick. And this is, um, it pretty much just gives you a self, a self description of what the module does. Obviously you're gonna want a, a good Wi-Fi connection, the more bars, obviously the easier it is for you to connect and make commands from your app to the camera. And so that's pretty much how that works. It's pretty simple, self-explanatory. Um, and then that's how that works. So um, as you can see in that live feed view, it did record a video. As you can see from the very top right hand corner in the little folder, there's going to be a little icon with a little, you know, yellow dot. You basically tap on that and it will give you whatever was recorded for motion or what was ever recorded, just video recorded. And you can do a, one or two things. You can either look at it or you can delete it. If you want to delete it, there's really two ways you can do it. You can hit the edit button at the very bottom and you can delete it individually like that. Or you can swipe from right to left as I usually like to do. So I just go to right to left, it deletes it and that's it. Now, as you can see under the clip row where it says storage, each Blink camera that you get gives you pretty much unlimited storage um, for any camera, which I think is actually kind of cool. Uh, you don't pay for the storage, it's actually free as opposed to all the other wireless systems out there. So basically you would just tap and then it says when storage capacity is exceeded, the oldest clips will be deleted. So you can either have this set to automatically delete um, for a year, for 30 days, 14 days, seven days, or three days. That depends on how you set the clip length for your videos and I will go into that and what I mean by that after I'm done with this. But I usually set mine at 30 days. And again, you can individually delete these if you want to. It just depends on what's the easiest for you to do. I usually let mine at, at 30 days. So after 30 days, it literally will delete everything that I have. So if you want to save it, you basically just have on the button you want. You tap on the stop button. It works as share, you tap on that. And you can either have the option of airdropping it to another Apple device, whether it's an iPad or your uh, MacBook, MacBook Air or iMac, or you can post it on social pro uh, social platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, 
or you can save it either and send it via messages to um, people that you have, depending on what, if you're using a neighborhood app or a ring app or just one to send it to a loved one and let them know or a friend to have them, you know, hey, be careful. There's this person that's been caught walking around or you can store it in your um, Dropbox, Evernote. It just depends on whatever apps you have available that allow you to share or copy that without having to worry about having it being deleted and being gone forever. And then once you're done, you just, you know, pretty much just exit out. And as you can see from the speaker, you can actually just mute the sound if you want to look at something. So as you can see, if I hit play, it literally mutes the sound. Button, then it plays it, mutes. So it just depends on how you have the speaker volume set for that. Now in the initial app, as you can see, that's the video recording. This is the photo record. This is the photo recording. So basically, if you want to take a picture of whatever's in front of your camera, you basically just take a picture of it. It kind of makes it kind of like a desktop for the camera and then on the top under the folders you have a little guy running that's basically your motion detector you want to really keep that on if you want your camera to detect motion uh, for that if you turn it off and then it will no longer record motion at all if you uh, at the very bottom you have what is called the armed and disarmed if you have it armed it will record and uh, it will record both motion and record uh, well pretty much it just does the recording of motion uh, for any of your cameras. If you turn this off, it will automatically disable all your cameras that you have, whether you're using just one camera or three cameras, it will disable it for all of them. So if you want to do them individually, you basically would just tap on the little running guy and it will disable it for each camera that you have uh, that you want to do that with. And then right next to the running guys, you have your little set your settings app. You tap on that and this is where you will do your initial settings for all your cameras, uh, depending on how many cameras you have set up. Obviously the name is gonna be whatever you name your camera, wherever you have it placed. The monitoring is basically for the battery, it tells you what the battery life is, depending on how you have your camera set up. It'll range from okay, it's either low or, um, or typically with two years, it will give you either okay, low or you know medium, depending on how you have it set and how long you've had your camera for. But, um, depending on how you have it set up again it does give you two years worth of battery life so typically you want to check on that depending on how you have it set so that you'll know um, if you need to replace the batteries or not replace the batteries and then you have what is known as the temperature monitoring which i really just leave at default so in the initial setup um basically what it does is it allows you to either uh, get a notification if it exceeds the temperature of the allotted temperature that you have. So anything above 80, it will give you a temperature. Uh, it will give you a notification for that. Anything that uh, goes below or that hits 40, uh, below 40 degrees, it will give you notifications. So for me, I live in Alaska. Anything below 40, I'll get a notification for that because that's basically what I have it set at by default. Or I can have it set to like say 50 or 60 degrees and anything below that it will give me a notification for that. And then there's the camper temperature for calibrating. I just usually leave that um, at whatever temperature it is because I don't really know what it is. And so I really can't calibrate it. So I usually just figure leaving it at the cold alert and leaving it whatever best temperature works for you wherever you live. If it goes below say 60 degrees, then you again, you can leave a notification and you'll get that for once it hits uh, below 60 degrees. So we're gonna go back in to where it says motion detection basically you want to leave that on if you want to leave if you want to get the motion notifications on your app for that and then you can create activity zones this is where you can create um, whatever you want for your camera to pick up for motion as you can see where i have mine set up um, everything that's shaded the camera will not pick up anything that's not shaded the camera will pick up and you can go in the even further details with the camera by hitting the advance and then it goes basically into individuals so say you want to individually block something out as opposed to shading the whole area out you just basically tap on each individual block and then when you're done you just hit done and then it will load up it will send the commands from the app to the module and then from the module to the camera and that's basically all that is it's a lot more detailed than you can get with um, the nest camera or the arlo i don't think i've ever seen anything where it lets you get into this much more detail I think it's kind of cool um, so that you're not consistently getting motion and then kind of wasting your space on useless stuff if you don't really need the motion for that area. Um, again, this is something you get for free on the Blink XT. 
Uh, otherwise, if you're using the Arlo or the Nest system, you actually have to pay in order to do that. So I think it's kind of an added bonus for the Blink over the other wireless systems. And then from there, um, I'm not really sure what the um, retrigger time is. The sensitivity, that basically means how much motion do you want the camera to pick up uh, when it's doing its um, notifications to you. If you have it set on high sensitivity, literally everything that gets blown through where you have it uh, not shaded on your activity zone, you'll get a notification for. Um, the lower the setting, the harder it is for it to pick up. So if you have it set on, you know, all the way down to two, literally it won't pick up anything until you are literally right on the camera. If you have the settings too high, it will say this may affect the battery life. You don't want it set at too high a setting to where it literally will pick up everything and start to drain your battery a little bit more than it normally would. Usually at about five, which is about midway, um, should be pretty much good for everybody. And then under that, you have your clip length. This basically to tells uh, the camera how long it should record whatever the motion is or whatever the activity is for the camera. Typically, the higher the setting, the more the battery will drain. The lower the setting, if you have it set too low, typically five seconds is kind of too short for it to pick up anything. About 15 to 30 seconds is typically where you'd want to leave it at because uh, generally anything that's going to happen is going to usually happen within that first 15 to 30 seconds. And then you also have the ability to enable the clip to stop recording if motion stops. So basically, if anything comes within the non-shaded areas of your camera, it will pick up that motion. If something stops, it will stop recording until the motion happens again, and then it will record that. I actually think it's pretty good. Uh, again, you can't really do this on the Nest cameras or the Arlo. Um, it really, really does help a lot, so that you're not getting a lot of kind of just like notifications out of nowhere for stuff that really um, doesn't really need to, you don't really need to be notified for. So it's actually kind of cool for that in that scenario. And then you again, you have the IR illuminator, which I'm not exactly sure again what these do. I just leave it as the default because this is the default for it. I'm assuming it has something to do with um, how it picks up uh, motion and notifications for your night vision. So you are able to see in the nighttime with this camera, it does have a pretty good night vision for the camera so it can pick up stuff in the dark pretty well. Um, then under that, you have your audio, so you can enable your microphone or disable it. Obviously, if you want to do the two-way talk, you leave it enabled. And then speaker volume, that's basically when you're recording back on your clips and you don't want it to be super loud, then you just kind of leave it at a certain set volume. So when you're playing your video clips, it's not super loud. And now we get to the video quality. Typically with this, I usually just recommend that you leave it in enhanced. Because basically best and enhanced quality are about the same. The only difference with best is that it'll tell you um, that it will save two years worth of battery life if you leave it in best. But you need to have a upload speed of at least two megabits and up. Usually everyone's going to have at least five and up. Uh, unless you're running DSL, then you're going to want to run much faster if you're running DSL. But if you're running, you know, your typical normal cable internet will give you more than five megabits up so usually this it's just best to leave it in hands it will tell you that it, um it will drain it will affect battery life i don't believe it will drain as well or as much if you leave it in the enhanced so i usually just leave it in enhanced and that pretty much seems to work a lot better and then here you have your last status update so basically every time the camera picks up something motion or something um it will give you the last update of when the camera was when you looked into the camera and saw what it was doing and then under that, you have camera to Wi-Fi because the camera still needs Wi-Fi in order for it to work. And then you have camera to sync module. So basically what that means is that whatever command you do from the app to the sync module, it will relay that to the camera. And then that's how that works. Obviously, anything in the blue, uh, anything with more blue bars or green is better. Anything in the yellow to red, you might want to move either the module into an area where you get better reception or depending on how big or how small your house is, just use an extender, and that seems to work much better. Uh, I'm using an extender on my camera as I can't move my router around too much. So with the extender, it gives me much better connection. So when I do any commands, uh, depending on what my settings are, whatever uh, I initiate, it goes from the phone to the module, and then from the module to the camera. And that's pretty much the basics of this app. It's pretty simple and easy to use. So again, this is Black Opinion of the Apple Guy. I want to thank everybody for watching. If this video was helpful, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. That way you will never miss content. 
when I drop it, hit the bell notification. And just to do a quick note, I am doing a GoPro giveaway. Once I reach 245 subscribers, I'm currently at 239. So once I reach 245, I will give a GoPro away. And 